Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Let me take this jacket off. I'm inside and I'm pretty warm right at the moment, even though it's like 20 something degrees outside. Okay, I wanna make this very brief as far as the introduction. We're gonna to get to work switching out our RV refrigerator for a residential style refrigerator. First question probably that popped in your mind is why? A uh, couple of reasons. First reason, this machine has given up the ghost. It has died. I made a phone call to a professional. I called the uh, manufacturer as well and uh, got some reference numbers, made some calls, talked to a professional. Sounds like this guy is over. The advice from the professional was to replace it. And I want to make this very, very clear because you're going to watch this and say, I'm going to look for what Mr. Tinsley says and go with that. Look, you call your service tech, call a company and get advice from them before you replace your unit. I did that and upon doing that it seems as if the cooling system has given up. I do see a light dusting of yellow in there. Usually when you see that that's ammonia leaking. Just to kind of give you an idea there's no code going off here. Uh, the head unit still worked beautifully. The freezer has completely thawed out. It's no longer freezing at all and neither is the refrigerator refrigerating. So I'm going to take this out and I'm going to replace it with a residential unit. Now, you may wonder why I'm doing that. This one had the ability to use propane, runoff propane. Look, number one, I am not moving. I'm stationary, plugged into 50 amp shore power. Number two, got a generator. I have a generator. These units are designed, according to the technician that I was talking to, these units are designed for weekend getaways. Well, I have been living in this motorhome not exactly by choice, but because of the design of our life and the way the Lord has worked our life. We've been living here for two and a half years now. That's going to change hopefully sooner than later. If you stay around, you might see us move into a home. Uh, but right now we're still here. These things are just not designed to be used day in and day out, 24-7, uh, uh, 365 days out of the year. They're really designed for vacations and getaways. A residential unit is not. They're designed to run all the time. The truth is, and you know this very well, that the newer model motorhomes and travel trailers are, are switching to residential style refrigerators. Uh, they just, they're better, they're more efficient, they've got larger compressors, they cool the product down, your, your food items and so forth better, the freezer works better, it keeps your food completely frozen. So they're just, they're just better all the way around. And if you're going to live out of a motorhome or an RV, it's probably the best way to go. Probably not do it when your unit's still working, your refrigerator's still working. But when it comes time to replace it, when this one gives up, go residential or go home. I'm going to actually remove this guy. And my wife and I are going to head to Home Depot, Lowe's, something like that. Try to find a unit that will fit specifically within our parameters. Two feet by five feet. I've already looked on, online. I've already Googled it. Looks like there's something out there for us at a very reasonable price point, by the way. And I'm gonna give all of that information here. Initially, I've given you really the reasons why you would want to do this before we ever get started in the video. So, I'm gonna take you along and you're gonna see this process and hopefully it's not too hard for me and hopefully you'll see that it wouldn't be too hard for you. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually remove these screws here. This was... put in likely to try to hold this all in place, this whole unit. All right, I got a screw underneath here that probably goes directly into this wood. Just a couple of screws here. Okay. I'm just going to start unplugging some of these lines. So you got 12 volt running in here to at least ignite your propane. So I'm going to release those lines now. The truth is, you should probably uh, disconnect your battery. Don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> you can even see back there where it says 12 volt DC. Now this is my water line that runs to the ice maker. Unfortunately, my ice maker has been out of commission for a while. It froze up and busted. The line did uh, right in here. I tried to repair it, never could. I got a few screws right here that need to be released. This one and that one there. Okay, the next thing that I want to do, shut the propane tank off. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and release this. Got it. I'm gonna have to 
get a cap for this. I'm going to take a photo of this, just where my finger is a reference, to take it to the store. This unit's ready to come out. Whoa. I need to go inside. Okay, I've got an old rug here. And I'm just going to simply slowly ease this thing out. I'd really like a second set of hands, but I don't know. I'm going to try it on my own first. <laughs> Probably not the best idea. folks this is what it looks like and you can clearly see that they designed an air gap here that runs up straight up and out and all I've got to do is basically close these off according to that professional service tech that I was talking to and that should give me peace of mind going forward all right this really helped me I'm in Lowe's right now and this is actually the fitting that I need to cap off and because they have this display I was able to pick up this cap I know that it's a flare fitting I know that it's 3 eighths of an inch so I've got the flare fitting so it's gonna work perfect good job Lowe's Okay, everybody, so you can see I've got some blue board here, and what we're going to do is basically put that in this side vent area that you see there to insulate this. I've already put a couple of pieces of blue board stacked upon each other for the sealing vent, and this is going to insulate. The idea was to create air circulation for the other unit, but the residential fridge doesn't need that. In fact, it needs to be insulated from the cold air. The tech guy that I was talking to said that if the, the thermistor reads 40 degrees or below, it'll actually turn the compressor off. So naturally it gets a lot colder than that outside. So we're going to insulate this. As I was showing you, I've got some insulation above and I've got some insulation that I've got to put down below. And what I'm going to do is, and I'm going to show you this, I'm going to take this muscle bound product, which is a double sided tape. I'm just going to use this double sided tape, hold the insulation against the wall. Okay, I just sealed that off with the muscle bound sort of around the sides and corner just to kind of hold that on. I took advantage of some metal flanges that were there. After we uh, got all this cut, the insulation, we're just going to clean this up here real quick. Okay, along with the theme of this sort of video, I'm not going to get rid of these 12 volt DC lines. I'm simply going to close them with some electrical tape. So there won't be any issue and any fire. And I'm going to let them sit down here below. And one of the other things that we're going to do, you can see here that this wall is actually this wall here. And fridges, somebody's calling. Anyway, residential fridges need some air for circulation and ventilation. So what we're going to do is we're going to just cut a hole here so that air can pass through the back and air can pass through and get back in here behind the refrigerator itself because we're air tightening this all back up in here so i'll be very happy with a vent back here it'll make me a lot happier okay guys so you can see here this is going to be my vent and i'm just going to pin around it and then i'm going to use the roto zip and make a hole and stick it in all right guys there's the hole there's the hole and there's the inside I am very pleased with that. I'm very glad we decided to go ahead and do that.
guys so we're going to conclude this video as you can tell the job is completely done and what a satisfying job it was I cannot stress enough how much I love our new refrigerator that was sort of made just for this particular enclosure it's been several days since we've actually installed the unit it's taken me some time to finish out the trim work i would be failing to tell you all how wonderful this has been for the last several days if i didn't actually conclude the video with some of these talking points so let me say this it's probably not going to show up in the video quite like it should but the depth of this residential fridge in relation to the old rv fridge is is light years apart the old rv fridge was rated at eight cubic uh, feet of interior space and this one's rated at i believe 9.8 9.9 9.8 so almost 10 cubic feet versus eight now almost two cubic feet doesn't sound like a whole lot maybe if you're just thinking well that's not a whole but i'm telling you the actual use of two extra cubic feet of space is unbelievable the my wife just loves her new fridge because there's so much more space in here again same exact enclosure same box but yet way more space i know that if you have an old rv fridge like we did it, it probably aggravates you especially if you came from a residential style refrigerator in your home and you've got this little little space well if it's good enough maybe for one person uh two you're pushing it three you're done it's 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 just you get the pick. This thing is unbelievable, folks. The extra space in there uh, makes the whole thing worth everything, okay? I'm so glad the other one broke down because this one's got so much more space. It's so much more efficient in cooling it. And on that note, let me tell you a little story. So we haven't, you know, tested what the numbers would do as far as the amount of refrigeration we want to put on the, on the unit. So I think I left it basically what it came with from the factory. And we stuffed some drinks back in there several days go by and suddenly there's this explosion we weren't here but there was this explosion inside of this guy uh, we opened it up and realized okay one of the soda cans has exploded it had frozen and burst inside the refrigerator not the freezer but the refrigerator Cheyenne and I had to clean up it was it was a mess but listen to what I'm saying the refrigerator cools so well and so efficiently that it literally froze one of our soda cans that's unbelievable. I've tried to take some video to kind of give you a comparison of the interior depth of the old unit versus this new unit. Um, it's not going to show up like it would in real life. I may take a few more video clips of that just to try to give you a sense of the extra depth that we have as well as the extra space that we have in the front uh, to put items like a gallon milk jug, stuff like that. So this is ice cream in here. You know, I mean, it just, I don't know if there's much more to say except that we really and truly love this unit and uh, are so glad in a way that the old unit gave up and decided it was it was time to go to the landfill. Uh, Sarenata, I guess, or see you later. Thank you. Goodbye. If you're watching this video, not because you have a RV fridge that's messed up or maybe you do and you're trying to debate whether going back with a $2,400 or $2,200 RV fridge, it's not going to give you enough space. It's not going to cool as efficiently that's going to give you maybe two years of full-time service potentially this is a great option for you obviously i haven't worked with this for three or four or five years to tell you this thing lasted and continued to last and never gave us any trouble i don't have that experience so you obviously know i just installed this but it's something for you to think about if you want more space you don't really need the propane you want something simpler but is more efficient so Thank you so much for watching this video. But every once in a while, I'll throw an RV video on like this one. And that was actually uh, really kind of what got our start into YouTube work was doing RV videos. We hope you like the video. We hope you subscribe. We want you to stick around and uh, see what we're doing, see what our life's all about. So until the next time, everyone, God bless, and we'll see you in the next video.